This video is about purchasing portfolio management. Port portfolio management in purchasing helps companies to decide about what strategy to pursue in what supplier relationship and what supplier segment. It helps companies to decide whether to go for collaborative relationships or competitive relationships, for short-term short contracts or multi-year contracts. The tool to do that to help you decide about that is the uh, purchasing portfolio tool. The average company uh, deals with thousands of suppliers, ten thousands of products that are being bought, and hundred thousands of invoices that need to be paid annually. How to keep track and how to organize this multitude of activities with a pretty uh, condensed staff of people? Where to put the priorities, right? Um, the purchasing portfolio method helps you in doing this. It helps you to change your priorities. Not all suppliers are of equal importance to any organization. Therefore, you should make sure that you pay sufficient attention to the most important ones and that you don't spend too much time on those suppliers that are just of limited value to your company. And the first step in doing that is the uh, application of the uh, well-known ABC analysis, which uh, says that about 20% of the purchasing spend uh, is usually uh, attributed by 80% of the suppliers and vice versa. Usually you make a differentiation between A items, B items and C items, A items being 20% of the items representing 80% of the spend, B items being 30% of the items representing 50% of the spend and C items 50% uh, uh, of the items representing just 5% of the spend. For many years buyers used this ABC analysis um, to uh, base their uh, supply strategy on. But of course there was one important drawback, um, disadvantage of this method. And the disadvantage is that you only look at spend as uh, item uh, and there are much more considerations that uh, you need to take care of when you design a uh, purchasing strategy. The first person that changed this way of thinking and presented a totally new approach was Peter Kraljic from McKinsey. He was the practice leader of procurement consultancy of McKinsey in the early 80s and he came up with this idea that if you want to develop a strategy towards suppliers, you need to take into account two things, financial impact and of a certain commodity and supplier and supply risk. Financial impact represented by the size of the spend relative to the total spend uh, and a number of other uh, criteria. And supply risk is represented by the dependence of the company of a certain supplier and its ability to change from that supplier. Um, there are a number of sub-criteria that you can use uh, to uh, identify that supply risk. And based on these two criteria, he came up with a very interesting matrix indicating four different segments. The leverage product segment, where you have the, the most of the spend and we where you have a lot of uh, f uh, leeway to, to maneuver. Um, strategic products, which also represent a big spend, but where you have also a great dependence on one supplier. You have routine products. These are many, many products that represent a very low value and uh, that can be obtained from many suppliers. And then you had bottleneck items, uh, which are very specific items that can only be obtained for a number of reasons uh, from one supplier. Spare parts usually fall into that category. And based on these uh, four segments, um, he, he suggested four different strategies. One was competitive bidding, so play the market rather fiercely in for leverage uh, products because these are commodities. There are a number of suppliers available, change costs are very low, so what you do is you uh, go for the, the lowest price. Strategic products, um, he suggested performance-based collaboration, kind of partnership, uh, but performance-based, trying to uh, work out improvements with suppliers. Routine products, there you should reduce the number of suppliers, 
For instance, bring all your safety products or your, your, your office supplies to one distributor and standardize your product assortment and make sure that uh, these can be ordered through electronic information systems, can, that they can be digitally uh, ordered, reduce transaction costs there, and then the bottleneck products where you have a totally different position towards your supplier. The supplier may be more powerful than you in, um, in dealing with the relationship. And there you should secure supply in the short term and search for alternatives to reduce your dependency on that specific supplier, which is far from easy. This helped companies um, a lot to uh, structure their uh, purchasing operations and their supplier uh, segments. And we thought, until a long time, we have thought that this was excellent to develop purchasing strategies. However, we forgot that there was also another view possible towards a buyer-seller relationship. And that is the seller's view. Um, the seller's view, because the, the, the supplier also may have uh, an idea and, and an, make, make, also makes an analysis uh, about the position of you as a customer. And what we saw was that in some cases, a supplier could be very strategic for you as a buyer. However, you as a customer for the supplier were of minimum value. So you had a very small position in the customer portfolio of your supplier. And therefore, uh, partnership and uh, working re relationships uh, could not mature. So, when we look about how the supplier may look at you, uh, we have this customer portfolio analysis indicating four different segments based on two criteria. Uh, a supplier may look at you as a buyer, as a customer, in four ways. He may look at you as a nuisance customer, someone that needs to be taken care of, but you know, you don't, won't give that customer much service. Or he could look at you as a core uh, customer, and there he would really invest in you, because not only you are a very attractive customer, but he has also uh, a strong position in the sense that uh, he doesn't have to, sh to share uh, the turnover with other competitors. So he's the only one providing services to you. And then you have the exportation segment and you have the development segment. Um, now, more information can be found, of course, in specific literature and in my books. But what, it, what it's now important is that you can combine both matrices. A picture of the Dutch windmill is presented in the slide, as you can see. At the heart, you find the purchasing portfolio. And if you look at the different sales of the windmill, you can see the customer portfolio. And this windmill uh, explains that there are at least 16 uh, possible situations that can happen between a buyer and a seller. And for instance, you can here uh, conclude that if you want to go for a partnership with a supplier, you should make sure that that supplier is in your strategic segment and that you as a buyer are in the core segment of that specific supplier. So that's one out of 16 possibilities that uh, may explain why partnership may happen. In other situations, partnership may have far less possibilities to pursue. Now, this uh, methodology, this portfolio me methodology, uh, this customer portfolio uh, uh, analysis and the Dutch windmill have, been, have proven to be extremely useful instruments to structure your purchasing strategy. It takes, however, a lot of time and discussion to position your suppliers and your different categories into these portfolios. So you should not take this uh, exercise lightly. It may you take you many, many months in order to, uh, to conduct such an analysis. But when you have it, it will give a very clear view about what relationship and what type of uh, strategy you're going to pursue uh, in the relationship with your suppliers and you're able to communicate that in a very easy way to your top management. And I'm sure they will like it.